In commercial real estate, for the last two years, the star both nationally and locally has been the apartment sector. Apartments are not the most glamorous or grandiose of real estate investments, as most people here already know, but they do offer the most certainty, stability, and security for your real estate investment dollars. All indicators are still positive for the Portland apartment market. However, economic job growth with wage inflation are the key to maintaining this positive momentum. Continued economic growth will allow Portland to enhance its already high livability factor, and in doing so, income and rents will move up across the board. So where are we today as we start in 2013? There have been multiple reports over the years, the last two years, talking about Portland's historically low vacancy rates and rising rental rates. And depending on which reports are cited, our vacancy rates rank from second to the fifth lowest of all major metropolitan areas in the United States. And in its survey of over 56,000 apartment units in the Portland-Vancouver area, the Metro Multifamily Housing Association's Fall 2012 report shows apartment vacancy rates have fallen from a high of 7.7 .7 in 2004 to a low of 3.6 in 2012. The inner east side submarket show the lowest vacancy at below 2.5%, and on the high end are Hillsborough and the outer southeast Portland submarkets at 5.4 and 5.2, respectively. The fall 2012 report also shows apartment rents have increased from an average rent of 79 cents in 2004 to $1.03 in 2012. This is a 5.5% annual increase, or excuse me, a 3% annual increase. Yet most of the gains have happened in the last two and a half years, when the market went from an average of 90 cents a square foot to the dollar three seen today. That's a 5.5% annual increase. So what are the factors driving these low rental rates, or low vacancy rates and rising rental rates? Number one, the rate of home ownership, which is at a high of 69% in 2006, and has dropped to just over 65% in 2012. This is the lowest rate we've seen in over a decade. And in addition, according to the U.S. Census, home ownership in the western part of the United States has dropped from a high of 65% in 2006 to just over 60% in 2012. People living in the West are more apt to be renters as compared to other regions in the country, and this drop in home ownership means more renters in the market. Another factor is the continued immigration to the Portland area of the Gen Y population. The Gen Y population are those born between 1981 in 1990 to 1999, and today are currently between the ages of 13 and 31, the prime apartment renter demographic. This is the largest segment of the U.S. population, which again means more renter demand for apartments. And as we've all heard, Portland is one of the it places to be for this demographic. Portland offers the culture and the livability the Gen Y population is looking for. But it's just not a numbers game with this group which makes them so appealing to apartment owners. It's also their habits. The Great Depression shaped the attitudes of a generation from the 1930s until World War II. The late 2000s recession has and will affect the Y generation for years to come. As a professor on public policy from Rutgers University stated, this is a generation that is scared of commitment, wants to be light on their feet, and was what was once seen as a solid investment choice, like a house or a car, is now seen as a ball and chain with a lot of risk to it. Because, because of this, they're choosing to rent. Rent their cars, rent their furniture, even rent their pets, and rent their housing. And even those within the group that are more traditional in terms of housing wants, because of the recession, they're confronted with lower incomes and tougher loan barriers. And this has made renting the logical or only choice in some situations. Another factor in the Portland market's rise in renter demand is the overall lack of new construction seen in the last four years. This trend is changing with an increase in construction permits and activity. There were fewer than 1,000 units permitted in both 2009 and 2010, and in 2012, over 2,000 permits have been issued. This is still well below the area's historical average of over 3,000 units, and also below the area's forecasted demand for apartments. Now let's look and see where the increase in construction is happening. With the variable nature of development, not all the units shown will be built, but this is an indication of the increase in construction activity. As you can see, the outer west side in orange has the largest number of total units planned, proposed, or under construction. An Intel $6 million expansion project will definitely help on the absorption of these west side units. It will be interesting to watch the level of absorption of the close-in core-located properties 
shown in red and green. This new supply is targeting the very similar market segment with small units with minimal or no parking. Asking rents are from $1.80 to $2.50 a foot or higher, and this equates to $900 to $1,250 a month for rent for a 500 square foot unit. And this monthly rent does not include the cost of utilities paid by or for or charged to the tenant. We've also seen this lack of parking with these new apartment developments being a major factor in the increase in neighborhood opposition. This opposition will add to the already increasing difficulty and cost to obtain entitlements for projects. In addition, debt and equity is still cautious, construction and land costs are increasing, and let's not forget the urban growth boundary, the lack of available land for development. So yes, construction is picking up, but there's still significant supply constraints in this market and this will delay our apartment market as a whole from entering an oversupply cycle. All of these factors are helping to keep our vacancy rates low and rents climbing. For 2013, I expect vacancy rates to increase slightly due to the absorption of these units, but they will continue to be some of the lowest in the nation. And I expect rents to continue to increase from 3 to 6% on average. The Portland apartment market is viewed both regionally and nationally as a favorable place for your investment capital. In 2012, there were 16 transactions valued over $10 million in this market. An example of a few were on the board. In 2011, there were 27 such transactions, over $10 million. These larger transactions, shown in red, accounted for 73% of the total dollar volume in 2012 versus 80% in 2011. Both of these numbers are above our historical averages. Our market has a relatively small number of these large properties, and the sheer volume of those sold in the last three years is not sustainable. There is still a strong interest from institutional buyers, and they're fighting even over a smaller number of large apartment projects for sale. So while the number of institutional transactions has fallen, values have held firm, and cap rates are as low as I've ever seen. Institutional apartments are trading in the five and a quarter to 6% cap rate range, and 50 to 100 basis points lower for projects located in the core. In the non-institutional transactions, 10 million and below, 2012 saw buyers look to re-enter the market, realizing Portland's strength and value. In 2011, there were 86 transactions, and in 2012, we saw 96 transactions under 10 million, and that does not include all the year-end, last two weeks of closings that we had in December. The historically low interest rates available for apartments, under 4% fixed for seven years or longer, has been a significant factor in this increase in activity in 2012. This rise in demand has caused values, depending on location and quality, to increase to near or slightly above the highs we've seen in 2008. These non-institutional apartments are trading for cap rates in the six and a quarter to seven and a quarter range, and again, even lower for core located properties. One area where we're not seeing an increase in pricing and lowering of cap rates because of weak buyer demand is in the C and lower class properties. Buyers are looking for quality, and the lower end properties need a compelling story to attract any kind of interest. We expect both of these trends to continue in 2013. The number of institutional transactions will slow down or stay flat, yet demand will stay strong, and the number of non-institutional transactions will continue to increase. This continued demand will cause apartment values to rise across the board in 2013. Now there are some potential obstacles which may knock the stars out of alignment, and number one, which I'm sure John will mention talk about today, is the rise in interest rates and a corresponding rise in cap rates. With a rise in cap rates from 6% to 7%, a property's net operating income will have to increase by 16% to maintain its value. This is not the gross rents, but the net operating income. This 16% increase is before factoring in the higher cost of debt as well. The other one is the lack of wage inflation. With little or no wage inflation, when do we reach a breaking point as to how much tenants can or will be able to pay for rent. Both of these factors are items that we need to keep a close eye on in the future. Yet, with the shift of the American dream away from home ownership, the flexibility the Gen Y population is seeking, combined with the relatively high barriers of entry for new product in this market, the Portland apart market will continue to be the shining star in 2013. Thank you. Feel free to learn more about our firm by visiting our website or calling us directly. Thank you. Thank you.